Hello everyone, it's Jasmine and welcome back to my channel. I have a really cool but long video for you today. I've got the Brutus Monroe Mermaid Inspiration Box and we're going to quickly go through the contents and then we're going to do six cards using the stuff in the box um, along with some other stuff too. But let's get started with the box first and foremost. So this is um, the little charm. They send you a charm with each box. And really cute, really small little pewter, well detailed charms. So you can use them on cards, you can make a bracelet with them or do something else like mixed media with them. They're really cute. So there's the charm. So we've got embellishments, a stamp set, a little ink cube, and cardstock. There's the stamp set. And I really love the little fishies in this. But um, the sentiments are really cute. The mermaids are really cute, really different splashing to say hello really cute ones and then here's the die and the die does not match one of the stamps it's a standalone die and then the embellishments they have in here are really pretty so you've got some smaller two-tone flat back pearls some little mermaid shimmer um, scalloped stones some mermaid ribbon some shell sequins some larger probably three quarters of an inch half inch three quarters of an inch wide um, pearls and then these blue glass stones and the, some of them are really chunky and thick and some of them are smaller they're really irregularly shaped there's a nice um, focus royal blue cabana ink cube and then here's some of my favorite parts so first we have some foilable pre-printed panels there's four different styles and these are meant for your heat foils so deco foil or the mink foil um, there's lots of different brands that have them. Jeannie K has some really pretty ones out. Some glitter paper. Some vellum. These are four six by six sheets of vellum. And then these two um, six by six pre-embossed sheets. This is like a white glitter scale pattern embossed. And then you have six colors of cardstock so there's a green a darker green two shades of blue two shades of purple and then white and so really quickly I've, i have three cards in here that have the foiled backgrounds in them and i'm just going to show you really quickly how to run it through you could just get a laminator this one i got off amazon it was like 18 bucks and um, you cut your foil to fit your panel and then just run it through easy peasy and so I just did all of mine at once I had a bunch of different colors of foil and um, ran the card panels through and then I wait to peel off the foil until it's completely cool and um, that takes I don't know 30 seconds or something and there's no rhyme or reason to why I do that I just do that <laughs> so you don't have to um, it just kind of fits the way I do things And we'll use that panel. So the first card is a mermaid and I've used some rainbow deco foil on the background and then we're going to do some ink dipping with some distress oxides. I've got mermaid lagoon, salty ocean, and blueprint sketch. And I just rub some of the ink on my nonstick craft, craft sheet. And then take some water from a mister and spray it and I take a paper towel or a, a rag of some sort and soak up any excess water that's around it just so I don't get any excess plain water on my cardstock because the cardstock that comes with the the printed foil sheets it's not really suited for water it's not watercolor paper or anything like that it's fairly thin cardstock so it can't take a whole lot of water so I dip it and then I heat dry it and then I dip it again um, but I heat dry in between each layer so that it doesn't break down the paper too much. And these will warp a little bit, again, because the cardstock is fairly thin. Um, but as long as you're not scrubbing at it or putting too much water on it, it'll be fine. I wouldn't necessarily do things like a watercolor paint background on these. Um, just because the paper is fairly thin and it's not really suited or designed for that much moisture. 
and the color will rub right off of the foil that is on the cardstock too. So let me just heat dry and I heat dry both sides to kind of avoid warping as much as possible. You will get a little bit. So next we're going to do our mermaid and I'm using Arteza and Zig watercolor markers. Now these are a water-based ink. They're not necessarily watercolors, um, but they're really fun to use, really easy to use. And they both have the similar brush nib on the tip. And um, I've got a 48 pack of the Arteza and then the 60 pack of the Zigs. And I like to use them together because they complement the range of colors. So I don't really have two skin tones in either pack. So I use the lighter flesh is what the Zig is called and then more of a tanned skin tone from the Arteza. And the Arteza markers are not numbered and they're not named. So um, when you see the supply list, I'll have the Zigs that I use specifically, but I won't have the Arteza specific markers just because they're not named or colored um, or numbered. So it's gonna be kind of hard to, okay, pull the lighter blue, darker blue, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so I do my best, <laughs> but maybe, um, in future product releases, they will kind of come up with a numbering system for them. So I'm using, um, three different shades of blue on her tail or fins, scales, whatever you want to call it. And in the video, this looks a lot more blue, but in real life, that darker, the darkest, I should say, shade of blue is more of a purple. I'm not sure why it's not showing the true color on the video, but I noticed it while editing that that darkest blue I'm using right there is more of a purple in real life, but it is showing up more blue on camera. Either way, it's really pretty, but just wanted to point that out. And when you're using both Zigs or the Arteza or together, um, you want to work with them and blend them while they're still wet because they don't blend out either together or just with water, like a water brush, for example, um, while it's dry. They just don't blend out nearly as nicely. So if you're using them, you wanna kinda just keep in mind that you wanna blend them out while they're still wet and before they dry. And they don't have a super long dry time. So for her hair, we're going to go with a pinky purple kind of tone. So I'm using a light pink from the Zig Zigs. Yeah. And then I'll use a brighter, um, more red pink from the Arteza. Like more of a magenta tone. And also keep in mind these do dry back a little bit. So when it's dry, it will be a touch brighter and a touch lighter than when they're wet. Kind of similar to Copics in that respect. And the Arteza are really nice for their price point. These aren't expensive markers. And the Zigs can kind of be price prohibitive, um, but the Arteza are really a really nice price point, really easy to afford.
And then I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut that out um, because there's not dies to go with these as far as I know. But that might be something they come up with later from British Monroe. But as of right now, they don't have dies to go with it. And I've just got a really light blue uh, B00 Copic to go around the um, pupils of her eyes just to give it a little bit of color. And then once that's dry, um, I've got a Spectre Noir sparkle pen. And you want to be careful with this because this will reactivate that color. So you can't like go from, you know, green to pink because without, without cleaning it off because it will transfer the color. And there's a little mermaid. I love her expression. So here we've got our background and I've mounted that to a panel of the purple cardstock from the kit. And then I'm going to use some gold embossing powder. Gilded is what the title is for British Monroe is gold powder and some burst mark. And then we're going to heat set that. Then I've got some foam scores behind our mermaid. And there we go. I love that rainbow shimmer. It's so pretty. So our next card is going to be this little merman. And he is going to be on a foil background as well. And we're going to use our Teza markers on him too. And the zigs again. And I wanted to keep his tail like a blue green. So I went in with a darker teal and a medium blue green shade. So many variations in the term teal. So, <laughs> but you can see what I'm doing. So that's good. And then I'll go in with the same skin tones as with the mermaid we just did with the Arteza and the Zig. And you'll have your darker tone around where there would be shadow. So on along his hairline and um, the right side of his face and then where the trident is covering over his body will be a shadow, cast a shadow as well. And my light source, if you're wondering about that, was just center. Um, it wasn't coming from the light or right or left or whatever. Um, and you want to kind of imagine these underwater. So there's not going to be a ton of light coming to begin with. So if you're not good with that, that's okay because you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> then I've got um, a medium coppery brown tone in the zig. And then I have a darker red-brown tone in the Arteza. And the Arteza does have a really nice color range, especially in their darker colors. Um, some interesting shades that I really like that I will be exploring a little more. And those will be nice to use for masculine cards. Can't forget his eyelids. <laughs> Then I've got a yellow and a more orangey gold tone markers for his trident. Oh, and I'm using Bristol cardstock to do my stamping and coloring. And I used archival jet black ink um, to make sure it was waterproof. 
So here I've got some vellum with Stick It on the back and we're going to use a wave border die from W plus 9 to um, die cut that. And so I'm just kind of arranging things where I want them to go. And I've got some powder tool to avoid any sticking of the embossing powder where we don't want it. And these two sentiments are from the stamp set, Fishy Kisses and Mermaid Wishes. And I thought that was really cute. And I decided last minute to add a little conch shell because I thought that would be pretty. But you will see in a minute that I kind of changed my mind after I get it all done. And I'm using um, some silver embossing powder called Sterling from Brutus Monroe. So I've trimmed it up and I'm kind of placing it where I want it to go. And then I'm removing the stick it from the corner and adhering it down as I remove the backing paper so I avoid any air bubbles or anything underneath it. And I ended up trimming off part of the conch shell on the bottom. So I just ended up covering it up with um, a stamped, colored, and cut out conch shell from another project I didn't end up using. And I'm just using a bone folder and some scratch paper to help me burnish that down. And then my craft knife to trim off a little bit of that edge. So just got a foam dot, foam square, on the back of the conch shell to attach it right over where I had it embossed, just so it doesn't look funny. And a little fishy. And then looking at this, I kind of decided I couldn't see the sentiments well enough. So I re-stamped them on some turquoise cardstock from the card kit. And then I'm going to use a couple dies to cut those out. And here's a trick when you want, if you have a sentiment that fits a die but doesn't quite fit it exactly, you can use the die, leave it on the door of your Misty, and then use the die to help you figure out how to manipulate it so that it fits. So I love clear stamps because you can't do this as rubber stamps. They're just not flexible enough. But with clear stamps, you can move them. So I stamped that with some Versamark and I'm going to heat emboss that using the sterling embossing powder again. And I needed to do a little bit of embossing powder surgery there. And the dies I'm using, the banner is from a neat and tangled scallop set and um, that uh, panel is from a Sizzix set. I'll have it linked in the description box. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head right now. So I took the um, a barrel of a small paintbrush and kind of curled up the banner edges a little bit to kind of make it look like um, a little more dimension to it. And then tear those down using some score tape. And there we go. I love that foil in the background, it's so pretty. So here's our next one. And this one has no stamping except for the sentiment. So we're gonna use um, another piece of vellum with Stick It on it, and we're going to use some Penny embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And this is a copper color. Some versa mark. And then I will heat emboss that and die cut that using um, an oval die also by from a Sizzix set. If you haven't tried the Brutus Monroe embossing powders, they are really nice. They emboss really quickly, really shiny and have a really pretty smooth texture to them too. So 
So this little die cut here I have is actually a leftover piece um, from two other die cuts that I did for two other cards in this video. But it was really pretty and I didn't want to waste it. So there's the two cards that it came from. So I just attached that using some mono Tombow mono multi glue and then trimmed off the edges. And then we've got our Little Mermaid die cut, and this is using the green glitter cardstock from the kit. And that mermaid die, obviously. And then I've got some Tombow glue again. I'm gonna make her kind of look like she's sitting on top of the waves, was my my vision there. And then our sentiment. Kind of burnish that down with my fingertips. Easy peasy. And I mounted that on some darker turquoise from the card kit as well. Number four. So here is, I call this one frame. And I'm using three different kinds of colors of Distress Oxide. And I'm doing some ink blending this time instead of dipping. And I've got uh, Mermaid Lagoon, Peacock Feathers, and Lucky Clover. If you haven't um, played with these inks, they blend so easy. And um, unlike the traditional, or traditional Distress inks, they are a hybrid pad between pigment and dye. So it makes it really creamy, really opaque, goes on super smooth, and you can do just about all the same techniques with the oxides as you can with the originals. These um, you can also stamp with, whereas the original aren't the best for stamping because of their formula. Um, they don't stick to especially clear stamps very well. Rubber stamps you can get away with, clear stamps um, not so much, but that's a different video. So anyway, um, ink blending, I did two layers of the ink. And then I will add a little bit of water on top to get like a speckled look, a bubbled look. And it doesn't show through in the video very well, but the pattern that's embossed on there has a sparkle to it. So it really shows up in the light. So I did heat set that just to make sure it was nice and dry. And then put some water in my hand and sprinkled it on top just to get some varying sizes of drops. And you kind of get a bleached effect. And now I've got some vellum with Stick It on it, and we're going to stamp our mermaid. And I had the idea of like a cameo, um, like the little old fashioned antique cameo pictures you used to see a lot. That's kind of what was in my head when I was um, thinking of this card. So I've got some more penny or copper embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, and we're just going to heat emboss her. And I thought of what if a siren gave a sailor a picture? And so that's what I thought of with this. And so I've die cut that using some oval dies and then I made an oval frame using the same set of dies with some copper glitter cardstock. And then I've die cut our background using a stitch rectangle die. And the finished size of that is a full traditional card, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I've stuck down my little mermaid, and then I'm gonna use some Tombow to fit that frame right around her so it fits just perfectly. Just kind of using the pressure from my hand to make sure it stucks down, sticks down, stucks down. And then I've got a smile die. This, the die is from Mama Elephant, and um, you've seen me use it before because I use this die all the time. And I've got some purple foil cardstock that I've die cut that from. I'm going to use the Tombow again to stick that down. And then I've got a variety, as you can see. <laughs> of um, jewels and sequins and stars and pretty little sparkly things 
that a mermaid would have in her stash under the sea. So I've just got some um, ranger, ranger matte medium to stick all of these little things down. And um, I've just kind of, rather make you watch me stick down every single one of those. It gets kind of tedious after a while. Um, <laughs> I cut some of that footage out and just put in the tail ends. I mean, it's this is not rocket science. Anybody can stick down a, a sequin, right? And this video is long enough, so. I just think it turned out so pretty. And so Little Mermaid. So, number five. Um, we've got another merman, and we are going to use Copics on him. Also using Bristol cardstock, and because we're using Copics, we're going to do Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. We're going to stamp him down a couple times, a couple layers of ink to make sure we have nice black lines. And um, just a side note, the Bristol is a thicker cardstock, but it also has a coating on it. And that can make it um, resist the stamping ink a little bit. So when you stamp with this, you want to let it dry for a few minutes um, before you color on it. Because if you color on it when it's wet, it will smear. So that's just kind of a caveat to using the Bristol. A lot of people also like Nina, 110 pound cardstock. Um, I'm not as much of a fan with that because I notice that I get more bleeding with it, but I think that's just me because a lot of people love it. Um, so kind of maybe get both and choose which one you like better. So under the color, I'm using Copic markers, like I said, and for his tail, um, we're going to use BG markers. So 09, 07, and then 02. Because I wanted to keep a pretty decent highlight and that's why I went with the 02 as my lightest color and then the 09 and 07 as my darker tones. And then I've got a colorless blender and I'm just dotting here and there to give it a little bit of texture. A little bit more of a scaly texture is what I was going for. And you can see it easier with your darker colors of ink than with your lighter colors of ink. But I tend to do a layer of dots, let it dry, and then come back in with another layer if I want to. So for his skin tone, we're going with a little bit of a more tan skin tone, maybe. Um, I guess you could call this Latino if you're going for a specific ethnicity. I really wasn't, just more of a tan was what my... My idea was I'm not great at skin tones yet. That's an area that um, I'm practicing. So I'm using three E colors. I've got 31, 33, and 35. 35 is going to be my darkest or strongest. And then um, 31 is the lightest. And I really like how this one turned out. I think it's really cool looking. So I'm going with another layer of my colorless blender. And this, it's called a colorless blender, but it's kind of a misnomer because it's more of an eraser. It tends to push ink away from it. Um, so if you think don't use it thinking you're going to blend your colors together because it will actually erase them. Just a little tip. So now I'm going to go and do his hair. And I'm starting with a B39, which is a really dark navy blue. You might think that's kind of weird. He's going to have blue hair. But I'm actually going for black hair. And this is a trick that I learned from Sandy Alnock. If you're new to Copic markers or you want to get better with them like I did, head to her website. Um, she's got a lot of really good classes that are self-paced, so you don't have to keep up with other people or anything like that. Um, you can watch them as you go. 
You can rewatch them a hundred times if you want to. Really good, simple, easy to understand stuff. And so we're going to use some C markers to add the black in. And I've got C6, 8, and 9, but I don't think I used any 6. I think it was only the 8 and 9. Because C6 was a little bit light for the the black tones I was going for with the kind of the the bluish undertone. And you could also use um, a darker violet marker if you didn't have the blue. But I really like how the blue looks in this. And if you have markers that tend to bleed ink or give you big blobs from one under the other, take both caps off your marker and that will evenize even evenly distribute the pressure or release pressure inside the marker and you won't get the blobbing. So I'm going to color my little blowfish and I love how this blowfish looks. See, it looks so funny. And I've got three Y markers. Do I show it in the... I try to show it in the video. I used a little bit of YR04 for orangey tone on him. But I believe I've got 13, 17, and 18 in the Y markers for him. And then I'm going to do my trident, or his trident. I've got Y17, Y13, and a little bit of Y18. So the same colors I used for the blowfish I've used in the trident. Yep, 17, 13, 18. Okay. Go me, I remembered. <laughs> so I'm using V09, V17 for this little fishy to the left. And um, don't do what I did. I put too much ink down in this fishy too fast. And he ended up blurring outside of his lines a little bit. It's not bad. Not to the point where I would start over. I probably wouldn't anyway. Um, just because I've spent too much time on the, <laughs> the merman. But um, he's a little guy. He's a little image. So you really don't need um, nearly as much as what I put on there. And then I tried to lighten it up a little bit and add some texture with um, an R000 marker. A super light pink. But it kind of didn't really work. So for my other fishy, I've got B28, 23, and 29. I'm going to start with the lightest one. And with this image being so little, you also don't need as much ink as I added. So <laughs> I'm going to kind of point out where I would have stopped, where I should have stopped, I would say. And I should have stopped right there. That's where I should have left it alone. But I didn't. And I kind of kept trying to make it a little bit more dynamic, give it a little bit more dimension. And um, I added too much ink. So he bled a little bit out of his lines as well. I kind of made him too dark too. But you live and you learn and uh, you color another one another day, right? <laughs> so 
So moving on to the background, I've got a B00, so it's a super pale light blue. And I'm going to color in around him and then use just kind of streaky motions back and forth to add a little bit of texture to the background. So it kind of looks like the water's flowing around him. And just for the sake of time in the video, I didn't record the whole background process just because it's it gets repetitive. Like I'm using the same motions, just um, I used a BG00 to add a little bit of dimension in terms of color. But um, it's the same motion, just the back and forth flicking motion to add some texture and some movement in the water. And you do want to make sure that you're, when you're flicking, you want to go in the same direction so that you don't get a weird crosshatch look to it, which could be interesting if that's what you're going for, but that's not how water looks. So, <laughs> and you will use a little bit more ink than you might be comfortable with, with doing a background like this. Um, but yeah. So I've used a white gel pen to kind of draw in some circles and bubbles around the fishies and add to the bubbles that are already drawn into the stamped image. Just to give a little more texture, a little bit um, more dimension, make it a little bit more dynamic. And that is done. I think it looks really cool. Oh, no, I lied. I added some sparkle pen to the trident. Somebody needs to make a sparkle pen that isn't sparkly and just glossy. I think that would look really cool. So I've got my, what's going to be my, my um, wave pieces on the bottom. And I've got two colors of the Brutus Monroe surface inks. One is Robin's egg that came with the unicorn kit. And the other is Cabana. And I'm sorry I don't have the whole thing recorded for you. But the top part was just um, a, an experiment really. I took direct ink cube to paper, so ink to so so pad to paper in terms of inking, and I wanted to see what texture it would give me, and I really liked the texture. Um, but I also did an ink blended on the bottom to give it a little bit of a different texture, and then I cut out each side using um, W plus nine wave border die. So in this one, I liked the texture, and I, I felt like it give it a more masculine feel. And more movement in the water. So there's the wave border die. And then so I attached it with some score tape, trimmed off the excess with some scissors. I did use one of the curls of the um, die cut to kind of cover up that little fishy. <laughs> You can still see him, but he's, he's a little bit, he's a little bit disguised. And um, put this in my Misty to stamp the sentiment. I'm using the Pen Penny uh, Brutus Monroe embossing powder, which is copper color. And then I've also got a starfish on the left corner. And I might be dating myself, but this is a mermaid card. And um, my first name is Jasmine. So... If you've seen Aladdin, then you've heard this sentiment before. It just makes me laugh. Um, when Jafar says on a scale of 1 to 10, you're an 11. That is what it makes me think of and it makes me laugh. So I really liked it. I don't know if they did that on purpose at Bruce Monroe, but it's pretty funny. So card number six. Finally, we've got... Um, Another foiled background that we're going to use some ink blending with two colors of surface ink from British Monroe, the cabana that came from this kit, and um, plum, which came from a butterfly kit they did last year, I believe, and then the speckled egg, which came from the uni unicorn kit. Um, so I'm using these Nouveau blender brushes, and I got to be honest, I kind of hate them. They, they just suck. They don't apply 
ink well, in my opinion. You really have to get it concentrated on there. You have to get a lot on there. They shed like crazy. Um, you can't see it in the video, but I had a ton of the little bristles all over the place when I finally got done adding. And this took me, man, two or three times as long using this stupid little brush as it would a blending tool or even the um, stencil brushes, the clarity ones. So I don't like the Nouveau br blender brushes and I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I won't be using them. I don't like them. <laughs> so if you're thinking about getting them, don't waste your money because I don't like them at all. Anyway, moving on. We have our final mermaid and a whole bunch of fishies. And I'm going to fussy cut th these out. So that's why they're kind of all stamped on the same panel. This is also Bristol Smooth. And because they're using um, Copics, we're going in with Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp. And so I'm using some different colors for her tail and fins using BG11. 18 and 13, I believe. Yes, I'm oh, a good guesser. And I did the shading a little bit different on this one. So I kind of kept the left side of her fin where her knees would be if she were, if she had legs and not a tail, um, <laughs> lighter. And then the, um, right side of her outer fin, I kept a little bit lighter. And then just um, BV11 for her little bikini top there. And then we're gonna do something really cool with her hair in a minute. And I'm using the same tanned skin tones that I used for the Merman, um, E31, 33, and 35. And the same color pattern, so adding 31 is my base tone, 35 around her hairline and a little bit on her tummy and underneath her chin and then 33 as my mid-tone keeping the center of her face the lightest part. So I wanted to do something really cool with her hair. So I went to Pinterest and I found like a sunset hair. And I was like really excited to try this out because I thought it looked really cool if I could pull it off. And I, I need more practice on it because while I like how it looks, I think it could have done a little bit better. But I think it's kind of kick-ass for what it is. Um, so let's see, I'm using her hair. I've got BV0108. I have RV04 and 09, V05 and 09, and then YR04 and 07. So I'm transitioning from purple, dark purple at the top to a medium purpley pink in kind of the middle, and then a bright pink fading down into a bright orange. And I did use a picture from Pinterest to kind of guide me, if you will. So I'm using the, um, let's see, the RV09 to kind of bridge the gap between the RV04 and the BV01 and the VO5. Not the BVO1, the, B, the VO5. Because the, the V markers are kind of the brighter ones for the most part. Um, the BV markers are more of a, can kind of gray out if you're not careful. So I like to use the V to kind of bridge the gap between the BV and the RV. And then um, the RV04 actually goes really well with the YR tones. So I've got the YR09 and YR04 for the orange. And I love how this turned out. 
and I think it looks so pretty in contrast to the BG tones in her tail. my colorless blender to kind of push back on her eyes where I've got a little bit of skin tone on there and then I used an RV 20 for a little bit of blush on her cheeks so I fussy cut that out and now we're gonna go to our background and attach our wave panel almost forgot the um, kind of splatter you see on that wave panel is a Sukuneko shimmer spritz and I'm going to attach my mermaid using some foam squares And then we're going to use um, a Misty to stamp and emboss the sentiment and a little fishy. And I didn't use my powder tool on this and I was kind of kicking myself because this was completely dry. However, the embossing powder did stick to that shimmer spritz that's on there. But I will show you how I got around it. So you can see a lot of those speckles is the shimmer spritz. So I just used a fine brush to kind of do a little bit of um, embossing powder removal surgery, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Um, I just kind of tapped it off and then just taking really light, using the hairs of the brush to kind of pick up that spare embossing powder. And then I heat set it and perfect. So shiny. And that was the gilded too. And so I've mounted that on a panel of the dark turquoise cardstock from the kit. And then on a card base. And there you go. Super shiny fishies. So fun fact, I forgot all about all those beautiful embellishments that are in the kit. Um, when I went to put the stamp set away, I was like, oh wait, these are gorgeous. I have to use these in some way. So I just kind of um, began playing with them and, and fitting them in where um, they belonged and not trying to force it. Because that can get, you can, you can overdo a card in my opinion when you try to put too much on it. So um, I just used some of the flatback pearls and one of the rainbow mermaid shimmery jewels is what I'll call it. <laughs> I don't know if that's a title, but it's really pretty on that one. And then this one, I use one of the larger iridescent pearls. It's off the frame, so you can't really see it. But it's in the picture. There you go. Those two-tone flatback pearls are really pretty. And there's three different sizes that you get as well. And then for this one, I attached some of the glass and one of those scale jewels and then a small flatback pearl around the starfish. And then another one of the sea glass pieces and the jewel and the pearl with my merman and then some pearls and a jewel and I fit I felt like those fit perfectly with the jewel crusted frame that I already had on this card so the pearls want to stick to my fingers more than they do the card and so these shell sequins 
because they are domed, they kind of don't glue on their own. So what I did with these was I filled up the space on the back with some gel medium or you could use embossing paste and then just let it dry. And then that filled it up and gave it a surface that it would stick with, kind of made it flat. So there's a tip for using those if um, you don't want, you can sew it on as well, but um, I didn't want to do that. So <laughs> I just filled it up in the back and glued it on that way. So here is close-ups of each card. And let me know what you think. Thank you for sticking with me through this very long video. Next time, if I have a video this long, I will split up into two. Because um, I know almost an hour is a lot of time for one video. I, I get that. I'm with that. Um, so thanks for joining me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting and liking and subscribing. All of that stuff. It helps um, kind of keep me going and keep me making videos. So thank you. We will catch you guys next time. And be sure to let me know what you think. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.